Hi and welcome back to Joe Talks Cars and welcome to another video. Welcome to a quick video, a little bit of an update on the Cayman. Many of you will notice the Cayman hasn't been on the channel for quite some time. That's because it's been away having some work done in preparation for an upcoming MOT. The MOT has just been and I'm pleased to say the car has passed with no advisories and no recommendations to be done at all, which is amazing considering the car is now 17 years old. But anyway, the car has been into the garage for brake discs and pads all the way around. This is a big job, and it's something that a lot of prospective buyers want to know how much it costs. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I got it for the price I did, and it may surprise you. So I've got the bill here and I'm gonna go through it in full and explain basically what I've had done. Well, the brake discs were well overdue. They were really, really worn. They had a real nice ridge on them and the brake pad warning light had been on for around 2000 miles. At first, I didn't think that it felt any different. After a while, you really did notice that the bite of these enormous brakes that are fitted to the Cayman S were starting to fade. You weren't getting that real keen Porsche brake pedal feel that you're used to. So they definitely needed doing. I went online and found some brake pads and I can't remember exactly how much they were and how much the discs were, but the Porsche official ones were crazy money. We're talking thousands for the front and rear. It was insane. So I went on to Design 911 and picked some Brembo ones and some Brembo pads. So a lot of you might not approve of that. These aren't genuine discs and pads. But it's one way that you can save a little bit of money. So the brake pads, not all too bad. 76 quid for the fronts and 37 for the rear. Extremely cheap. The front discs, again, maybe a fifth of the price of a genuine Porsche one at 65 pounds each. So 131 pounds for the front discs. The rears, 61.75, so slightly smaller, I guess, on the back. So a little bit cheaper, 123 for the pair of those. You then need pad sensors. Didn't realize you had to replace those. I'm not gonna lie. They were only £7.70 each, 31 quid. Some dampening discs. I don't know what any of that is. Someone maybe put in the comments, I don't know what that is, but I had to have four of them. Oh no, I had to have eight of them. And, and dampener plates. If you know what they are, just drop it in the comments. I have no idea, but all that, the dampener plates and the discs all added up to like 100 quid, so. Not all that much. Labour, two and a half hours, not very long, quite a simple job. And in the UK, we have to have an MOT test and got it put through that, 45 pounds, and it of course passed. They have put a note on here, which I didn't actually realize until I've come to do this video, but the front upper pad shim weights are seized onto the calipers. They require the caliper removing to try and remove. I'm not sure how bad that is, but yeah, that's something to bear in mind. But other than that, everything was fine. The car flew through its MOT. And bearing in mind, this car is from 2006. I'm super happy with that. So after all that work has been done, that's including the MOT test and replacing all discs and pads all the way around on this car. The total price after that was £810.33. And to get a car from 2006 through its MOT with 70,000 miles on the clock, for 800 pounds, I think is really good for any car, never mind a Porsche. So I'm super happy with that. Yes, it's again, another fairly large bill, but when you think about all the work I've done to this car, I've got some of the big jobs out of the way now, and I can start to think about getting some more, mod some modifications added to it. And that's what I wanna talk about next. So I have teased over the last maybe year or so that I'm getting an exhaust for this car. Well, now it's had its coolant pipes done, its engine rebuilt, suspension refreshed, all new discs and pads. Everything's done. The car is mechanically really sound. I think it's about time I got an exhaust on it. So that is basically my plan. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna start looking around for a nice exhaust. There is a couple that I've got in mind, and one in particular is the top gear system. It's got a valve in it, and I think that is probably the exhaust system we're gonna go for. But of course, I'll show the full fitting of this. I wanna bring you guys along with me and show you basically what goes into swapping an exhaust on this, whether you, I recommend doing it, and ultimately what it sounds like when I've finished. I've had so much expense with this car since picking it up almost three years ago. 
and none of them have been that fun. I've had new tires, new brakes, new coolant pipes, new engine. The next thing the car is going in for while I'm away on holiday more than likely is it's going in for its paintwork. So many of you will remember a video a few months back actually, back in July, the car got rammed into in my work car park. So that insurance job is all going through. It's gonna cost me nothing and they're gonna sort that out. So the garage will be getting the car in very soon and I'm getting a courtesy car, something like for like. So that'll be interesting. If it's something good, I'll do a video on that as well. But yeah, the next focus for this car is to basically get it cleaned up, get that paintwork sorted, start shopping for an exhaust. But anyway, I think without any further waffle from myself, I'll take the car out for a little drive. It's a really quite a nice evening. The rain has stopped and I just thought, let's get the car out, do a little video, update you on what I've had done, where it's been, and also my plans for the future. Not only the plans for this car, but the plans for the channel as well. Just never gets boring. And by adding an exhaust, all I'm gonna do is increase that. This is a standard exhaust system, and it sounds absolutely epic. That bellow that you get from the flat six engine in this. If there's ever any doubt in my mind that I want to swap this car, get something else. I only have to take it out on a country road like this and put my foot down, and all my doubts go away. I just want to hang on to this car. And not only that, but the way it looks as well. It's absolutely stunning. Yes, it's a little bit dirty and there's probably going to be hundreds of comments now saying, my God, couldn't you have cleaned the car before you did a video? No, I couldn't. I don't have the time. I barely have the time to make the videos, but here we are. But yeah, the plans for the channel, of course, I've got lots of plans for the channel, lots of plans with this car. And although the channel will be mainly focused on the Cayman, I do want to bring other cars onto it do more reviews like I have done. I've had great success with different reviews, so I want to do more of that. So I've got a really exciting journey ahead of me. And one of my biggest videos yet will be landing on the channel in the next few weeks. I'm borrowing a very special car from a company called Genesis, and I'm taking that car on a Euro trip. And that's going to be happening in the next few weeks. So if you're interested in seeing more content on this car, but also my Euro trip, which I've got planned, then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for plenty more videos like this one to come. I do intend to get out more and film more on this car. Now all the bulky work is out of the way. The brakes and the suspension and all these annoying jobs, they're all out of the way now. And I'm not suggesting that this is gonna be the end of it, but it could be the end or close to the end of all the boring jobs, the boring jobs that I don't wanna pay for. And as always, this channel is just about how someone like me who can't really afford this car is able to drive it every single day and how financially ruinous is it? And that was basically the whole basis of my channel. Can someone who can't really afford a Porsche afford one? And that's all it's about. So if you're interested in seeing more on this car, on my Porsche ownership, ownership journey, and also my Euro trip, which is coming up in the next couple of weeks, then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for plenty more videos like this one to come. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.